Welcome to Electron Online. So here is our first example for our first method, the method of substitution. And as we saw in the previous video, we took the first equation and solved it for x in terms of the other two variables. Now, notice I labeled the three equations, and that's not a bad idea to keep track of which equation we're dealing with. So here's equation one, same equation in the different format, by moving the minus y to the right, make it a plus y, and the plus 4z to the right to make it a minus 4z. The plus 9 is still plus 9 on the right side of the equal sign. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into our second equation and our third equation instead of x. So instead of x in those two equations, we're going to replace the x by y minus 4z plus 9. So I'll show you what that looks like. Again, I'm going to label the equations so I don't lose track of what I'm working on. And now I'm working on equation 2. So end up with 5 times instead of x, I write y minus 4z plus 9. Then we still have the plus 3y minus 6z is equal to 3. And notice that entire equation now only has two variables, the variables y and z only. x has been eliminated. And this, now I take the, second, the third equation, equation 3. And so I write 3 times instead of x, I write y minus 4z plus 9. Then I have plus 7y plus 4z is equal to a negative 1. You have to be very careful about copying the equation exactly like it did before, but only making the one substitution instead of x, we write what x is equal to from our first equation. So now what we need to do is notice that we have two equations with two unknowns, y and z, so we're going to simplify each of those two equations separately. So starting with equation 2. So we end up with 5y minus 20z plus 45 plus 3y minus 6z equals 3. And now we're just simply going to continue with that equation until we have it in its simplest form. So first we collect terms, 5y and 3y, that gives us 8y. Minus 20z, minus 6z is minus 26z. And 3, positive 3 on the right side. Now when we bring the 45 over to the right, becomes negative 45 plus 3 is a negative 42. And notice that everything is even, so we can divide everything by 2. That gives us 4y minus 13z is equal to minus 21. So there is our first of the two equations. We'll still call it equation 2 in our simplified form, only with the variables y and z. We do the same for the other equation. So equation 3 becomes 3y minus 12z plus 27. We have to be careful. It's easy to make mistakes here plus 7y plus 4z is equal to negative 1. And again, we're going to collect common terms. We have 3y plus 7y that gives us 10y minus 12z plus 4z is minus 8z. And we have a negative 1. Bring the plus 27 over becomes minus 27. That becomes minus 28. And again, everything is even, so we can divide by 2. So we end up with 5y minus 4z is equal to minus 14. And that's equation number 3. So now we have the two equations. Equation 2 and equation 3 are only two variables, so let's put those together. Equation 2 is 4y minus 13z is equal to minus 21. And 5y minus 4z is equal to minus 14. So how are we going to solve these two equations? Well, we already know how to do that because we've seen that before in the previous set of videos on chapter 33. Now we're on chapter 34. So here we're going to use the method of elimination. We're going to multiply the top equation by, let's say, times 5. And we're going to multiply the bottom equation times a negative 4 like so. So when we do that, we'll get a negative 20y, and here we get a positive 20y, and when we add the two equations, the y's will drop out. So, let me show you in color. So here we're going to multiply the left side by 5, multiply the right side by 5 as well, and here, let's put it like this, here we're going to multiply this times a negative 4, 
and we're going to multiply the right side by negative 4 as well. Remember, we have to do exactly the same to both sides of the equation. See what happens. On the first equation, we, get a, we end up with a 20y minus 65z is equal to minus 105. Here we get a minus 20y plus 16z is equal to a positive 56. Now when we add the two equations together, notice the y's drop out. This minus this gives us a minus 49z equals this minus this gives us a minus 49. Divide both sides by minus 49. 49. And we get z is equal to 1. Victory! We found our first of the three variables that we're looking for. We know that z is equal to 1. How do we find the other two? Well, the next step we're going to do is we're going to take one of these two equations and plug z equals 1 into them. So let's take this equation right here. So we end up with 5 times y minus 4 times z. Now z is equal to 1, and that equals a negative 14. So we end up with 5y minus 4 equals negative 14. If we now add 4 to both sides, we end up with, let me come over here, we end up with 5y is equal to negative 14 plus 4 or 5y is equal to negative 10, divide both sides by 5, and I get y equals negative 2. So there's the second of the three variables I'm looking for. z equals 1, y equals negative 2. The only thing left to do is solve for x. Where do I go? I go back to my first equation right here that I solved for x in terms of y. So let's repeat that equation over here. x equals positive y minus 4z plus 9. And now I'm going to plug in 1 for z and negative 2 for y. So x is equal to negative 2 minus 4 times 1 plus 9. x is equal to negative 2 minus 4 plus 9. That's x equals negative 6 plus 9. Or x is equal to 3. So x equals 3 y equals negative 2, z equals 1. So the solution I'm looking for, the coordinates x, y, and z, where the three planes meet together, one point, is going to be equal to 3, negative 2, and 1. And that's the final solution I was looking for. Yes, it's a lot of work. But if we are careful and we don't make mistakes, you get the right answer. Sometimes we make a mistake and we just have to kind of start over again somewhere. But again, let's repeat what we did. We're using the method substitution. We took the first equation, solved it for x, and plugged that value for x in terms of y and z into the other two equations to end up with these two equations. Notice instead of x, we write y minus 4z plus 9. We simplified both equations. There we have equation number 2, no longer has an x in it. There we have equation number 3, no longer has an x in it. We then combined the two equations. Now we solve two equations, two unknowns. We multiply the top equation by 5, the bottom by negative 4, so we can eliminate the variable y when we add the two equations together. We solve for z. Then we take that value for z and plug it either in this equation or we plug it in this equation. It doesn't matter which one. We plug z equals 1 in this equation, so we end up with negative 4 times 1 instead of negative 4 times z. Solve for y, we get y equals negative 2. Now we have both values for z and y. Then we go back to this original equation that we solved for x in terms of y and z. We repeat it over here. We plug in negative 2 for y, 1 for z, and now we get the value for x. If you want to make sure you did it correctly, although when you come up with nice numbers like that, we probably did it correctly. But just to make sure, what we could do is we could take the x, y, and z values and plug it into the one of the other two equations. Not the first equation, because that's how we found the third variable. We could plug it into one of the other two equations. So let's do that for equation number two. So we're going to do a check. So equation two, two, let's rewrite it. We get 5x plus 3y minus 6z is equal to 3. And let's plug in those values to see if the left equals the right. So x was equal to 3. So 5 times 3 plus 3 times negative 2 
minus 6 times 1 equals 3? Question mark. That's what we're trying to find out. If it does, if the left side equals the right side, we probably did not make any mistakes. So 15 minus 6 minus 6 is that equal to 3? Question mark. And sure enough, 15 minus 12 equals 3? Question mark. 3 equals 3. Yes, it is. Check. We did it correctly. You could again plug them into the third equation just to make doubly sure you didn't make a mistake, but at this point, I'm fairly satisfied that we're probably okay that that is the solution to that system of linear equations in three variables, and that is how it's done. Speaking of mistakes, I made a few. <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> Yeah, if you make a mistake, you just have to go back and do it again. 161. Hmm. Something doesn't appear to be working out right. I made a boo-boo. I made a boo-boo somewhere, yes. I certainly did. You had a 4y minus 13z equals minus 21. Over here. Huh. Let me see. I may have copied something down wrong. Let me... Oh, I see where I went wrong. Okay. We gotta backtrack a little bit. Otherwise, it's a mess. All right, so now what we do here is we divide by two as well, make it simpler, so this becomes something is bad. I need to back up even more. Uh, I don't know why I make those. Just really weird. Where am I? Okay. And it's easy to make a mistake. It's the visual thing. It's organization, eliminating the possibility of mistakes is the key. Labeling things, circling things, recopying them down. Don't try to work from across the page, all these things. And then still, it's easy to miss something, miss a negative sign, copy the wrong thing. We just got to be very careful and systematic in order to do these types of problems. But at least the method is the key. If you don't know the method, that makes it a lot harder.